Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Wednesday's edition of Alaska Weather. On the 7th day of July 2021, I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, hosting today's show once again. Up first, uh, fly, or fi flying weather? No, fire danger. And it's uh, really been reduced by the rainfall that's been seen, especially across Copper River Basin, along the Copper River itself, had extreme fire danger there. Gone now with uh, some very good rainfall amounts, especially up toward Paxson into the eastern Alaska range, 12-hour amounts ranging to anywhere four to six tenths of an inch, so some soaking rains going on there. And uh, in slow improvement even over the up over the Yukon Flats there with some additional precipitation seen. Of course, lighter winds in those areas as well helps uh, as well. Uh, otherwise, moving on to uh, hazardous weather graphics. There are no watches, no warnings, no advisories out anywhere around the state for the next day or so. And uh, from there, looking at satellite imagery, you can see a uh, curvature to the clouds or comma shaped cloud there up over the Western Brooks Range with clouds into the Northwest interior. Fairly good, or uh, actually heavy rainfall amounts, 24-hour uh, amounts, Ambler picked up 1.16 inches of rain there in the Kobuk Valley. That's, again, the last 24 hours. And Kotzebue had one and a third inches of precipitation during the same time frame. And no attack picked up uh, about a third of an inch by contrast there, but then Selawick uh, had 1.08 inches, so some pretty good rainfall up over the northwest part of the state today. And uh, also not too far away from there, this peak wind gust uh, that I could find, strongest wind gust in the state I could find at Cape Lisbourne. They had a gust of uh, from the east-southeast there on the north side of that system up to 50 miles per hour. Otherwise, uh, gusty winds, Western Brooks Range, were in the 35 to 45 mile per hour range. Uh, across the Western Brooks range through the passes, but much lighter winds elsewhere. And uh, a lot of clouds, uh, maybe some clearing, but not too much there over the uh, upper Yukon Valley area. Uh, Beaver managed to top out at 71 degrees earlier today. They were back down under 70 the last observation I looked, and that was a warm spot over the interior. Panhandle Stewart, 72 degrees, that's it. Uh, 70 is getting pretty hard to come by now. Uh, here as we progress into July, but may make a return a little bit there, especially up over the Yukon Flats, uh, say on Friday or so, but uh, may take a little longer elsewhere around the state. Otherwise, you can see clouds moving into the northern Bering Sea out of the Russian Far East there, St. Lawrence Island. Clouds and uh, reaching the Yukon Delta coast. And clouds, showers, rain, cool temperatures. Uh, Southern Alaska, to a lesser extent, Copper River Basin. Looks like maybe a few uh, sun breaks occurring over the Wrangell Mountain areas there. Panhandle, a weak band there dissipating, really pretty dry conditions there. And still some partly sunny skies with, as I mentioned, temperatures trying to push into the 70s, lower 70s. Uh, Stewart, the only place making it, though, was 72 degrees. And you can see the Sierra Shield associated with the next system approaching the far western Aleutians. Otherwise, a kind of high pressure ridging over the uh, central and western Aleutians makes for light winds and uh, possible clearing, but not too much. Clouds covering much of the Bering Sea. On the chart, you can see that weak ridge uh, from the 1036 millibar high today. Just uh, south of the Aleutians there, the ridge axis, and the system a little farther to the uh, west-southwest there, but uh, several weak lows drawn on the chart here. Uh, around the state, one over near Dawson, another one up there over the eastern North Slope area, one off the western Arctic coast, and then the system approaching St. Lawrence Island, and then the one crossing the Alaska Peninsula, bringing some rain there today, starting to taper off now this afternoon, and then higher pressure. Uh, winds kicking up a little bit, 15 to 30 miles an hour to the west-southwest, or west-northwest there for the uh, Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians but nothing uh, too serious. Otherwise, uh, again today, the uh, heaviest rainfall amounts up over the northwest interior, as well as uh, along the eastern Alaska range area and in the Cop western Copper River Basin zone. Also Prince William Sound, that low pushing in, Valdez, four tenths of an inch of rain. That's a 12 hour amount, ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon. And uh, Delta Junction had two tenths of an inch of precipitation, soaking rain there, uh, that, again, a 12 hour amount. And uh, otherwise, um, 
For tonight, maybe some clearing over the central Ontario with a decrease in the shower activity, more scattered to isolated, widely scattered to isolated. Scattered showers continue, mostly cloudy skies, cool uh, Kenai Peninsula up across uh, Susitna Manuska Valley, Copper River Basin, periods of light rain along the North Gulf Coast, continued subtly flow with that weak low. Over the southern Seward Peninsula, risk of a shower, Kodiak Island, but looks for some clearing to take place and showers to end. As the flow turns more west-northwest there, weak ridging into Bristol Bay. That'll occur also over southern Cook Inlet. Chance of showers northern Panhandle, mostly cloudy with just a risk of an isolated shower to Prince of Wales Island, otherwise dry, and basically dry for the Aleutians, except out towards Shimia, some rain nudging its way northward there with that system toward morning late tonight, otherwise uh, Kind of a break there, staying nice, light winds, variably cloudy skies, Adak and Atka over to the Fox Islands. No change for the North Slope Arctic coast, kind of a couple of weak troughs there bringing surges of light rain, fog, and drizzle across the area. And for the day Thursday, low pressure, a little more uh, stronger low there, uh, north of St. Lawrence Island. So pretty good trough from that. So look for rain, fog, and windy conditions. Yukon Delta, St. Lawrence Island. Could see gusts uh, 30 to 40 miles an hour in the windier areas there for the western Seward Peninsula. And Cape Ramon's off, uh, Scammon Bay, those areas. And lesser wind over the inland areas with also lesser chance of rain or the rainfall amounts will be a little lighter. And then uh, area of rain, a couple of troughs in the central interior. Mostly cloudy, cool again, or cloudy. Rainy, showery, cool, chance of thunderstorms. Pretty isolated though, mostly over toward the eastern border. Uh, nothing more than just widely scattered thunderstorm activity expected. Showers, Kenai Peninsula. Still a chance of showers for Kodiak Island over the mountainous trains. Could see some sun breaks though. And northern Panhandle weak trough uh, makes for just a chance of some showers up in the north there, but periods of rain or showers for the North Gulf Coast and the eastern Copper River Basin. Outlook for Friday. Uh, southern Alaska, remnants of moisture swinging up from the south and the uh, upper level trough, really not moving too much uh, right over the interior, or actually trough axis right over the interior. So it looks like some moderate amounts of rain with that low sliding down into the Kuskokwim uh, Bay area. Kodiak Island, good shot of rain, a little windy. Now push up into southern Cook Inlet, rain Kenai Peninsula into the uh, southern Susitna Valley, becoming more showery for the Madnuska Valley Copper River Basin. Uh, unsettled, damp, cloudy, cool for the northern Panhandle, North Gulf Coast, as well as much of the western interior areas. Not bad for the Arctic Coast, though. And over the Bering Sea, eastern Bering Sea, could see some clearing, possibly, as that front weakens considerably as it stretches eastward or drives eastward, uh, pushing toward Unmak Island with an uh, increasing chance of rain in the afternoon, but becoming fair. Adak Atka, west of Shimia, chance of showers. Wind's not much of a factor with the system at, at all. Looking at the uh, forecast uh, lows tonight, uh, 40s, except uh, mid to upper 30s there for the central Arctic coast. Otherwise, 40s everywhere else. Lower to mid 40s, Pribilof, St. Lawrence Island, Western Aleutians, and mid to uh, mid 40s, mid to upper 40s, 45 to 50, say for south central Alaska, as well as the Tanah Valley, lower 50s for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, struggling, probably won't reach 70 in the Yukon Flats or anywhere over the interior. and. Uh, 50s to mid 60s for the panhandle so it'll probably be a 70 degree free day for the state of alaska for the eighth day of july and then the lows back down into the 40s set lower to mid lower to mid 30s for the uh, central arctic coast into the western north slope lower 40s for the brooks range 45 to 50 or mid to upper 40s tanana valley 45 to 50 southern alaska kodiak island lower to mid 50s for the panhandle followed by highs uh, nudge it back above 70 there in the Yukon Flats, maybe 72 or 3, Chalk Yitzik, Beaver, possibly, optimistically, but uh, having trouble reaching 70 for the greater Fairbanks area. 55 to 60, South Central Alaska, and 50s, lower 60s for the Panhandle, lower to mid 50s, Bristol Bay area, maybe 58 for Nome. Uh, Mid 50s for the Bering Sea and the Central Aleutians. Otherwise, the Alaska Peninsula, mostly in the uh, lower to mid 50s there. And uh, even McGrath, Nikolai, Northern Kuskokwim Valley, trying to push 60, having trouble making it. Mid 50s down to the south. And uh, other than that, uh, maybe some mid to upper 50s occurring on the North Slope. Otherwise, much cooler along. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
Moving on to flying weather, Thursday morning, IFR Arctic Coast, uh, northwest coast as well, in toward Kotzebue, Selawick Valley area, Notak Valley, and in the part of the Kobuk Valley, southern slopes of the Western Brooks Range, marginal VFR, southern slopes of the Central Brooks Range, and the North Slope, down across the Mid-Yukon River Valley area, Cuscombe Valley, southern Alaska, eastern interior VFR, northern Panhandle, Lincoln Owl Glacier Bay area, IFR and then the southern three quarters of the southeast coast, marginal VFR, and some IFR there, southern Kenai Peninsula, Montague Island down to uh, Fognac and the east side of Kodiak Island, IFR, Bering Sea, Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, Yukon Cuscombe Delta to St. Lawrence Island, and for the afternoon it's uh, looking a little better, VFR now down into northern Bristol Bay, at least the inland areas, but along the north coast there's still marginal VFR. Marginal for the Alaska Peninsula, except from about uh, Nelson Lagoon westward, IFR. Marginal and IFR conditions, Fox Island. Solid IFR, though, across Perbloffs, Nunavak Island, St. Lawrence Island. And a band of VFR there, kind of a break between Atka and Nikolsky. Otherwise, Atka westward, IFR. IFR North Gulf Coast Range there, uh, northern Prince William Sound in the mountains up to Possibly the Talkeetna's areas of VFR breaking out over south central Alaska, east and south of the Alaska Range. Good VFR to the north. And IFR right along the central eastern Arctic coast. And IFR and marginal VFR for the Panhandle. Mostly we'll IFR for the southeast coast on Friday morning. And again, uh, in the coast range in the southern Copper River Basin, Wrangell Mountains, IFR. Also for uh, Passage Canal to Eastern Turnagain Arm, IFR southward, Resurrection Bay and toward Kachemak Bay and Kamishak Bay, marginal VFR Kamishak Bay, and IFR eastern slopes of the Alaska Range, and IFR in over the Yukon Cuscombe Delta, Dillingham, Datogiak on up to St. Lawrence Island. Privilos right on the edge of some uh, better conditions there with VFR to your west southwest, uh, some VFR, Fox Islands, otherwise IFR for the Aleutians. And uh, Arctic coast, mostly IFR, Not, a little bit of improvement on the western Arctic coast, otherwise central east side hugging the coastline there with the IFR conditions, north slope VFR into the central interior. And southern Alaska, IFR, so marginal VFR, same thing for the Panhandle, Kodiak Island, western interior, marginal VFR, except uh, northwest coast VFR, lots of IFR there for the Bering Sea. Maybe some VFR for the western Alaska Peninsula on the Pacific side, but it uh, looks pretty bleak for uh, the area from Alaska Island westward to Shimianat too. And for Anatuvik, marginal VFR becomes VFR at least uh, into the afternoon. And Adigan, optimistically, VFR the entire day, either approach. And Lake Clark and Merrill look for marginal VFR. Best chance uh, before noon, but Still could see it possibly into the afternoon, but it won't be solid marginal conditions throughout the entire day. Same thing for rainy, possibly some marginal VFR at some point in the day. Tomorrow, windy, same possibility. And Isabel, mostly marginal, could be some VFR periods though. And for Mintasta, mostly on the southern entrance, look for the marginal VFR, otherwise pretty good. And Tanita, occasional marginal VFR, which means VFR at other times. Portage, marginal. And Chilkoot and White, pretty solid with the IFR. Freezing levels, about four to 5,000 feet over the uh, interior, western interior there to 6,000 feet plus up over the upper Yukon Valley, Eastern Brooks Range, and then 12,000 feet there right through the central Bering Sea and just catching the southern panhandle. Icing, areas of light to isolated, very isolated, moderate rime or mixed icing. Uh, North Gulf Coast, Southern Alaska, up the west side there to the North Slope, maybe a little bit heavier possibility just south of St. Lawrence Island, and then with the next system coming into the Western Aleutians. Jet stream, uh, north to northwest, 105 knots across St. Lawrence Island, and southerly is 95 knots, eastern North Gulf Coast, and northwest flow, 40 to 55 knots, eastern Bering Sea, and southwest flow up to 35 into the Panhandle, and 30 to 40 knot winds from the northwest central Bering Sea, southwest or west southwest 45 knots there. Let me back that up a second. From St. Lawrence Island into the Seward Peninsula and turbulence with that will be some considerable moderate chop there. Western uh, Seward Peninsula to St. Lawrence Island, like to isolate moderate chop on the increase, Shimmy and Attu, maybe the Fox Islands. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts and other information. 
Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And joining us once again is our good friend Eric Stevens from GINA, the uh, uh, Geographic Information Network of Alaska. Thanks again for joining us, Eric. We really appreciate it, as always. Happy to be here, Dave. Thanks. And, you know, we're, we're going to ask you some more satellite questions here, but, you know, okay. since you're a regular guest, we, we're going to give you a riddle this time, kind of a, a trick start to the show. Okay. How do you see a polar bear in a snowstorm? Sounds like a challenging question because okay. the polar bear's white and the snowstorm's white. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, in the world of satellite meteorology, uh, you couldn't because um, the spatial resolution of this instrument that we're going to talk about today has 375 meters resolution. And okay. even the most well-fed polar bear will not be 375 meters across. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to run into such a no, creature, a would you? Um, in the satellite meteorology world, the equivalent would be, how do you tell the difference between clouds and then an area that has no clouds but is mm -hmm. covered by snow, right. a piece of ocean that has no clouds but has sea ice. Ah. All three of these are white. The, right. the snow, the clouds, the sea ice, it's all white. So how, using satellite data, can you tell someone where the clouds are and where the clear areas are? This is important for aviators. Right. Uh, mariners want to know uh, in the ocean there, this white stuff, is that sea ice or is that just a cloud? Right. How do we tell the difference? And it turns out, if you look, say, at a picture of Alaska from the springtime, March okay. or April, and it's high noon, so we're getting a lot of sunshine. If you were, ride, if you were riding on a satellite with your human eye, yeah. look down, everything's white. Right. And we've got uh, you know, a picture for, of Alaska from uh, early April, and mm -hmm. we're seeing some of the lower elevations in south central Alaska are melting out, getting some brown ground there. But otherwise, there's a whole lot of white sure. on the image. What areas are cloudy, but what areas are clear and covered by snow or ice? Okay. It turns out that if we leave the visible spectrum behind a little bit, okay. see a satellite has multiple channels in the electric magnetic spectrum that it can look at. Oh, okay. Part of that's okay. visible light, what right. we see as humans, but there's a lot going on at other wavelengths. Mm -hmm. If we add in something that's called near infrared, what we couldn't quite see, but we're getting into that infrared territory, mm -hmm. there's a magical property that oh. we can exploit. Secrets to find. Okay. Oh yeah. This is actually powerful and, and, and almost magical that at a, a slightly longer wavelength when the sun shines down on Alaska mm -hmm. and then it bounces off back to the satellite, at that near infrared wavelength it turns out that snow and ice will absorb that wavelength but uh, liquid water, like liquid droplets in a cloud, mm -hmm. will reflect it back. Okay. And, and that's not the way it works in visible. You know, visible, it just bounces off of all those targets the same. But at near infrared, snow and ice absorbs it, and the liquid will reflect it back. Liquid cloud droplets will do that. Okay. And so an image where everything looks white suddenly becomes colorful. Oh, okay. And the way this recipe works is that the clouds look pink, and the snow-covered ground and the ice-covered ocean look blue. Suddenly now, we're able to see the polar bear in the snowstorm. We're able to see where the clouds are okay. and where the snow is and where the ice is. This is a powerful advantage. Consider the case uh, zooming into the Bering Strait area. Mm -hmm. What if you were asked to brief a pilot who wanted to fly, say, from Kotzebue down to Savunga or Gamble right. and had to fly VFR, visual flight rules, right. so they had to stay out of the clouds? Could you use a satellite image where everything is white to provide that pilot any guidance? It's pretty tricky. Very tricky, yeah. and that's why we have to go to this other recipe where the, the all-white polar bear in the snowstorm becomes more colorful. And now we can tell the pilot, aha, this mm -hmm. is a cloud you want to stay out of, but over here, sure, it looks white in the visible spectrum, right. but what we're doing will show you, oh, this is just snow-covered ground, but it's clear, so you can fly right through there, Fascinating. visual flight rules. Same thing for a mariner, a mariner who might want to uh, get down to uh, St. Lawrence Island, say, but mm -hmm. it has to avoid the sea ice, this product has applicability there as well. Wonderful. It's, it's an amazing new technology, so many new channels. Uh, the, the satellite that makes this imagery actually has 22 different channels that it looks at. 22 bands. secret decoder rings. 22 secret decoder rings. Okay. Uh, you know, I liken this to an uh, you know, activity I had in the car when I was growing up. We'd go on long car rides, and we'd do all the work in these activity books to you know, stay calm, cool, and collected for our parents who were trying to get us across, uh, across the state. But to get the answer, the real answer, you had to apply that red sheet 
to see the answer or the secret path or whatever the message was in that activity book to get you onto the next next page. And it's also like a, a photography filter, right? If you're, if you're taking a lot of pictures, you can apply different colors to see different parts of that image. I mean, that sounds a lot like what you're talking about. Oh, you know it. We The information is in there all yeah. along. We just have to combine the channels in a way to reveal what's in there. And by the way, you're dating yourself. So you didn't yeah. have an iPad in the back of the car? No, sir. Right? Okay. <laughs> well, we have... Lastly, for dessert, okay. there's a great image of the same kind of recipe. We're looking at South Central Alaska mm -hmm. the first week of January. In Jan first week of January, the sun, even at noon, is really, really low, low on the horizon, right. barely up. And in this image, the fun thing is the shadow of Denali. We can see the shadow oh, of wow. Denali over a, a lower pink cloud deck. Yeah, that's and amazing. Denali at 20,000 feet casts a big shadow. Mm -hmm. So this is another, just for fun, kind of application here. That's oh yeah, th this is called multispectral satellite imagery, and it's the future. And happily, <laughs> the future is now. Oh, that is fascinating. And 22 different secrets that can be revealed from just one satellite tool that's mm -hmm. floating overhead. Mm -hmm. Eric, thanks so much for joining us again. We, we can't wait to have you back and telling us more secrets of satellite technology <laughs> that are passing over us every single day and uh, many times a day mm -hmm. over Alaska and helping us all the way in uh, many different parts of our lives. So thanks so much for joining us again. Well, happy to be here. All right. And thank you for staying with us. We'll be back with a little more weather here in just a few minutes. And, of course, we'll have more Alaska weather facts anytime online. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Looking at the sea ice analysis from the 5th of July, two days ago, uh, <clears throat> you can see what it looks like there, and then I'll compare it to uh, today's, and you can see the subtle changes that took place from yesterday to today. Really not a lot of change bouncing the back and forth there. It kind of shifts north somewhat. Uh, Actually, ice increased in uh, thickness there along the Russian coast, but whatever was left in and around Kotzebue Sound vanished, and uh, minimal changes occurred along the Arctic coast itself, and uh, little change expected over the next few days. Coastal water forecast, panhandle, south winds, 10 knots, except Lynn Canal, where there'll be 15 knots. Seas running 2 to 5 feet for Thursday. Friday, Lynn Canal, Glacier Bay, northern inside water, south winds in the afternoon, 20 knots with four foot seas. Stevens Passage, south at 15, Clarence Strait, northwest 15. Light winds on the south coast from the west southwest at about 10 knots, four to five foot seas there. And the north coast, south to southeast at 15 knots. Prince William Sound, southeasterly is 15 tomorrow with uh, two foot seas. Cook Inlet, southerly breezes at 10 to 15 knots with seas around three feet, give or take. And Kamishak Bay, Southwest 15 knots, Barren Islands, North Gulf Coast, light winds from the south predominantly at 10 knots and seas only three to four feet, three to four feet. We'll pick the winds up on Friday, Prince William Sound, southeast to 20 knots with seas four feet, North Gulf Coast, southerly 20 knots, seas three to four feet, uh, probably be a little higher than that. And uh, Barren Islands, same thing, south or small craft advisories, South wind's 25 knots, and I'd go higher than that three feet for the seas there, maybe five, six, seven feet or so. And Kamishak Bay, southeast to 30 knots. Small craft advisory, seas nine feet. Southern Cook Inlet, south wind's 25 knots with seven foot seas. So small craft advisory's there, but lighter winds north of the forelands, looking for south winds of 15 knots. Kodiak Island tomorrow, west southwest breeze, 10 to 15 knots, three to four foot seas. And uh, Bristol Bay, southwest at 15. Alaska Peninsula, west southwest, 15 to 20 knots, sea six feet. Increase in the wind, small craft advisories, the Alaska Peninsula on Friday for westerlies, 25 to 30 knots with seas at eight feet. Bristol Bay, small craft advisory, southwest 30 knots, 30 foot, or I'm sorry, southwest 30 knots, seven foot seas. And Kodiak Island, southerlies, 30 knots with six to seven foot seas. For the Fox Islands, uh, westerlies, 25 knots, seas 7 feet, Adak and Atka, same thing, west winds 25 knots, 6 to 7 foot seas, Amchitka Island, southwest at 15, and Kiska to Shimia, southerly at 20 knots, seas at about 6 feet. And then for Friday, from Shimia to Amchitka, small craft advisory, southwest 25 knots, seas around 8 feet, Adak and Atka, west southwest 20 to 25 knots, and uh, Unamak and Unalaska Islands, west 15 to 25 knot winds. 
five to eight foot seas. Southwest coast, uh, northern Nunavak Island, small craft advisory, southwest winds 25 knots. Same thing for St. Matthew Island. Perbloffs, west at 20 knots. South of Nunavak Island, southwest 15. St. Lawrence Island, small craft advisory, south 25 and seas at eight feet. On Friday, swing those winds around to the north, picking up uh, Norton Sound, northeast, 25 knots. Small craft advisories there for the sound on Friday. And St. Lawrence Island along the Yukon Delta Coast, northerlies at 30 knots. And small craft advisories for the Cuscombe Delta Coast and the Pribloss are northwesterlies at 25 knots with seas just under 10 feet. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, uh, south to southwest, 10 to 15 knot winds and variable to southeast. So pretty light winds for the central coast at 10 knots, even on the west side, south at 10. All the way down to uh, Cape Thompson, 10 knot winds. Cape Thompson to Wales subtle, he's at 15 knots, it's five foot seas. North 20 knots from Wales to Cape Thompson on Friday. Four foot seas, Cape Thompson, Cape Beaufort, north at 15. Northwest 10 on Western Arctic coast. Central coast, west at 15, otherwise variable 10 for the Eastern Beaufort Sea coast. For tonight, uh, areas of light rain, fog, and drizzle up there along the Arctic coast and the North Slope, extending southwestward across the Noatak Valley into Kotzebue Sound. Another area of precipitation of showers over the Yukon Cusquam Delta. Another batch yet over the Pribilofs approaching Nunavak Island. Another storm spreads rain into the far western Aleutians late tonight and doesn't make much headway for Thursday. But Friday, that front pushes eastward and weakens considerably. And uh, one more. No, that's it. Okay. Thank you for joining us, and we'll be back again tomorrow. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>